Hello, and welcome to Tim's BMW Repairs and Information. Well, there's one thing you don't want to see pop up on the mids while you're driving along, or the instrument cluster on an E32, E38, E39, and so on, is trans failsafe prog. Yet that really makes your face drain of colour, and your innards drop to your feet. And you immediately start thinking, well, that gearbox is going to cost a couple of grand to get repaired let alone getting the gearbox out of the car. And so I can't do it myself. I haven't got a lift or anything like that. Oh God, what am I going to do? And so on and so forth. We could always go for a secondhand box. They're only about 500 quid, about $700. But there again, you've got to get someone to fit it and you're talking a grand or so. But don't panic straight away. I've had Trans Failsafe Prog on two cars now. I've had it on the E32, my 730. And on this car, uh, probably a couple of years ago, and both times it cost me very little to fix. I think it cost me 80 quid to fix the E32 and about five pence, a couple of cents to fix this one. So it isn't always the end of the world. Of course, the gearboxes do go wrong on these cars, especially if they're not looked after, if that trans fluid hasn't been changed and the filter's been changed and so on. They do go wrong. But there's been, it's about 50-50, I think I've seen, where it's not a failure of the gearbox at all. It's a failure of something else rather than the gearbox that causes the trans failsafe prog. So the whole point of this video is we'll go a through a few cases and I'll explain what caused the problem and how it was fixed. Right, the first one we'll talk about is the E32. Um, I was a long way from home. It was snowing, absolutely freezing cold. I managed to do the journey there. When I got back in the car, started up, moved a few yards, and trans failsafe popped up on the instrument cluster. Now, this is a well-known problem with uh, all the old BMWs. Battery condition, not battery voltage. Of course, the battery voltage would have increased during that journey. But uh, battery condition. Now, when a battery gets old, its intrinsic series resistance increases. And that sounds like gobbledygook, but it, all it actually means is it can't supply current without the voltage dropping quite substantially. Now, the gearbox is just a series of solenoids, just a coil of wire around a, a lump of metal or a magnet, depending on the model. And they take a huge amount of current, uh, especially when it's cold. And the other thing that suffers from the cold, of course, is the battery. Um, its uh, ability to supply current is diminished as the temperature reduces. And so we've got two things fighting against each other. Something that wants to take a lot of current, which is the automatic gearbox, and something which can't supply the current, which is the battery. And because it's just a, a short um, burst of electricity to the solenoid to get it in, to engage, and then the current reduces to hold it in position. If it doesn't actuate in the given time, then the gearbox computer, the EGS, notice that, notices that and you get trans failsafe prog. So that was quite a simple problem, but it's something worth considering. It isn't battery voltage. You can look at the mid and the hidden features and you see it's up at 14 volts or something. And you think, well, it can't be the battery. The voltage is fine. Well, it can, I'm afraid, but it's battery condition rather than battery voltage. So that's number one. If you've got a problem with trans failsafe prog, first thing to always do, if the battery hasn't been looked after, change it. And that will at least rule that one out. Right, problem I had number two with this car, the E31, a couple of years ago. I was whizzing down a road and uh, I was in sports mode, as you normally are. And all of a sudden it changed gear all by itself. And I thought, that's a bit strange. I'll, I'll knock it back into drive just in case. And then all of a sudden it went into sports mode all by itself. It came up with a strange display on the gear display on the instrument cluster, which is S3, which isn't a normal display to get on there. And uh, I thought, right, I'm going to have to stop. And I stopped and restarted. Trans failsafe prog came up on the mid. 
and yeah, that was a bit worrying. But it gave me a clue, the fact that it gave me the wrong gear information on the instrument cluster. Um, it's quite a simple uh, system with the gear change to select the gears. All it has is a little selector switch. Now, don't forget, of course, the 5 HP gearboxes, unlike the 6 HP gearboxes on the 6 series and so on, they're still mechanically controlled to some extent. There's a Bowden cable which goes all the way from the shifter to the gearbox. Cable that runs down, it's got a selector and it moves the selector around. Um, that was stopped once you, we got to the 6 HP gearboxes. Because, I mean, if you've got electronic control of gearbox, why go to the problem of having a cable and so on? Well, the cable's there for emergency situations more than anything. And, of course, it puts the pull lock on. So the park lock is uh, done by the cable as such. It selects a position in on the internals of the gearbox that puts the gearbox lock on. So 6HP doesn't. It's done electronically by, by the mechatronics unit. But we've still got a cable running from this selector to the gearbox. Now, the display is controlled by a selector switch, which is either under here on the M60 engine D31s and the E32s and so on, or it's on the side of the gearbox, depending on which model it is. Um, and it does confuse me which models it's on, but it's certainly on this E31, but isn't on the M60 E31s. Now, that selector on the gearbox is just an electrical switch. And as you move the shifter between park, reverse, new, uh, neutral and drive, it selects certain switches within the selector, either at the gearbox or in here on different models. Right, so the problem with this, the switch in the up below the selector on the E32s and the early E31s can be just as simple as the grease going off and going stiff, just like it does everywhere else in the car. And in those situations, some of the switches don't actually work. Now, I say some of the switches because it's actually four switches um, within one switch unit. Now, the repair of these are quite simple. So, you remove the V selector uh, panel here and underneath it is a switch. Whip the switch out, clean it out with WD-40, grease it, stick it back in, you're done. The one underneath the car on the E31 is a bit harder and they're very difficult to get hold of for the E31. There seems to be E38 versions around, no problem getting those, and E32 versions, but E31s, of course, there are very few of them. And the connector pinout slightly different. And there's a couple of other minor differences with the, the shape of the switch as well. So I thought I'd have a go at fixing it. Now, the problem is they're under the car. They get the dirt and the weather. And eventually the dirt and the weather will get inside the switch and it will start to cause failures. Now, they don't come apart too easily, if at all. I, I know some people have taken them apart. But they're very strange things. They have a pipe coming out of them, which is where they are filled with uh, lubricant to start with. It seems a very strange plan altogether. And it really did confuse me. A normal switch with electrical inputs and outputs, a mechanical input and a pipe. Yeah, a pipe with a little bung on the end as well. So I thought, well, I'll give it a go. Put the car up on ramps. Might as well see if this works. Got the tube from WD-40, stuck it up the, the tube that goes to the selector switch, gave it a few squirts, and it's weird because you can you can feel the pressure build up within the switch because it's a fully sealed thing. And then it starts coming out of a sort of little bits and bobs. And uh, yep, yeah, and then you pull the straw out and half the WD-40 comes flying back out again, along with a few bits of debris and sort of corrosion. I thought, well, this sounds like a good plan. I'll give it five or six more goes and see what happens. Well, I did, and it fixed it, and it's fixed it ever since. So two years ago, rather than get a new selector switch, rather than go under the car 
and try and get the thing out, which isn't going to be easy. Uh, the exhaust pipe's right in the way to start with. Yeah, it wasn't going to be easy, so I was very glad that uh, the WD-40 trick worked. And I remember at the time on one of the forums saying, well, that's not a very good fix. Well, two years later and it's still going, and I didn't have to get under the car and pull that switch apart. So I was very glad about that. So, yeah, ones which produce strange displays on the instrument cluster, um, like S3 on this car, that is always either the selector switch there or the one on the side of the gearbox, depending on which model we're talking about. So if you've got something where you put it in and it's in park and you don't get park and the display just goes blank, then you're pretty sure that that's going to be one of the selector switches. So that was number two. Yeah, the next one was very strange. It was an E32, I think it might have been an E38. And uh, as soon as they got in and turned the ignition on, you'd get a trans fail safe straight away. The interesting thing about the trans fail safe is that it, the gearbox didn't trans fail safe. It just worked as normal. The gears worked forward, reverse, neutral, first, second, third, and all the rest of it. It worked perfectly. It didn't seem to be any problem at all with the gearbox. So why are we getting a trans fail safe? Well, there's ways to get um, the information out of these, out of the EGS, which is via diagnostics. And he used diagnostics, and I can't remember if it's stomp codes or done via IMPA. Whichever way, it came up with an error code that said the shift lock solenoid had failed. OK, so what's this about? Well, the shift lock solenoid is doing its trick at the moment. It's locking my shifter so I can't move it out of park. And that's done by another solenoid that uh, puts a bar of metal across the shifter so I can't get it into gear. Now it's done that, uh, done that way so that as soon as I press the brake pedal and uh, when the car's running, I can get it out of park. And that's done with a shift lock solenoid. So it's got a solenoid here. So when anything's running and I press the brake pedal, the solenoid will pull the bar of metal out of the way. I can now select gears. OK, so the fault code was shift lock solenoid open circuit or whatever. The only problem was is once he got all of this off and had a look at the shifter, unlike mine, which has got a shift lock solenoid, he didn't. He didn't have one. So what was going on? Had a previous owner removed it and done some sort of resistor mod or something? No, it wasn't that at all. It was something that we had problems with throughout this car, certainly the E31 and the E32, is that the electronics are an age where they start to fail. Um, and the bit that fails is the options which are stored in something called uh, flash memory. Now, the early flash memory wasn't perfect. Um, like today, unlike today's EEPROMs and flash memory, which remembers all the stuff you put in them forever, the early ones didn't. And uh, they could have a failing where they'd lost the information that was initially put into it. So we're talking about the gearbox computer, the EGS. And one of the options that was put into the flash memory is whether it has a shift lock solenoid or not. Now, what happened to this member, uh, one of these forum members on his car, was the flash memory had started to fail and it had decided that the gearbox had a shift lock solenoid when, of course, it hadn't. Now, he was quite an enterprising bloke and rather than replacing the EGS, which is the normal fix for this because you can't reprogram again because, of course, the flash memory is starting to fail. So the usual repair is just to change the EGS. They're cheap enough. And you don't need to code it to the car or anything like that on an E31 and E32, nor the early th E38s. think the Vanos E38s possibly, but I don't think so. I think they're just a quick swap. Anyway, he decided not to go down that route. He decided to put a load on the wires which came to the shift lock, well, the missing shift lock solenoid. He actually put a bulb in there, which uh, more or less uh, 
fooled the EGS into thinking that it had a shift lock solenoid. It's, I think it's a 55 watt bulb or something. <laughs> anyway, it took enough current. Uh, probably got the, the shift to cover quite hot, but it did the job. It thought it had a shift lock solenoid. No more trans fail cipher. It took us quite a while to get to this point, I can tell you. Many, many posts on the forums talking about shift lock solenoids and where it is and why you haven't got one and so on. It is quite a learning process for all of us. But in the end, we worked it out. The flash memory is failing in the EGS and we see this in other places. All of a sudden, the gearbox, uh, the steering wheel razor and lower and forward and back will start working back to front and the seats will start working back to front and the mirrors and so on all caused by the same thing not electrolytic capacitors which is often thought but the flash memory failing in them because of course the same system is used on many different cars and the wiring may be reversed or the mechanics or the motor or stuff stuff like that is reversed so one of the options is to reverse the direction of the switches on this that and the other and then things start going back to front on the gearbox, it'll start thinking it's got a shift lock solenoid. And that's what was causing his trans fail safe. So there's three solutions for you. We've covered about 40 to 50% of the trans fail safe pro problems now. Now on the E31 and the E32 with the M70 engine, it's got an EML system, electronic motor load or whatever it's called controls the throttles and uh, cruise control and it's got electronic throttle pedal and so on. Now where the two banks on the V12 don't produce the same power, i.e. the same load voltage, um, slow, the same load reading in the DMEs, then that's an engine fail safe or an EML problem and it tells the gearbox computers there's a problem and it will go into trans fail safe. So there's number four, which is problems with um, load imbalance on the V12s. And it only happens with the V12s because the V8s like this one is all cable driven throttles. And the E38s up to the Venos ones are all cable driven throttles. And the E38 Venos ones has single throttle, whereas of course the V12s have got two, two separate banks, both uh, providing power and they should produce the same load, um, same torque to the gearbox. And when they're very much out of balance, and that happens when one bank starts failing, like the cylinder in identification coil and stuff like that, or ignition coils, spark plugs, HT leads, then the uh, load signal, which is actually the injector duration, will change. And when it gets too far out, it will say, trans fail safe, there's a problem. We can't be sure how much load the engine's producing. We can't be sure which gear to put the gearbox in. That's it, trans fail safe. So there we go, there's another one. And we've covered about 50 to 60% now, all things which can be solved without changing the gearbox. Now, as I said right at the start, the gearboxes do go wrong. Five HP gearboxes do go wrong. Put the window back up now, freezing. Because they get old and the clutches wear out and so on. And they'll give an indication of them going wrong. Um, and the indication of them going wrong is you put your foot on the throttle, something goes bang in the gearbox, shakes the car a bit and trans fail safe prog. And also the same as when you're trying to pull away, you give it a bit of welly, something goes bang, you get trans fail safe prog, you end up in fourth gear. That is an internal gearbox failure, which is about 40% of the failures. Get clutch packs that fail and the fail safe mode for the gearbox is to stick it into fourth gear. Why fourth gear? Because it's a one to one ratio doesn't need any of the planetary things moving around or anything just puts the brake bands on them and uh, yeah so it's straight through from the engine to the output shaft one to one ratio fourth gear it'll lock it in that now it's normally the first second and third gear clutches that fail in these gearbox clutch pack a and f i think um 
there was a problem with the pressure regulator valve, which actually explode one of the clutches. But quite often the A clutch will start slipping, in which case the gearbox will notice that the gearbox is slipping. EGS will notice it's slipping and it will stick into fourth gear and it puts much less torque through the gearbox. The gearbox really is doing very little. That is a hard failure and it needs the gearbox replaced or refurbished. So that the signature of that is that it thinks something goes bang quite severely. You feel it hit the car and then it locks itself into fourth gear. If you put diagnostics, it will show it's got an output speed sensor error. Now, that isn't because the output speed sensor in the gearbox has failed. It's actually because the gearbox is expecting the output shaft to be turning because the turbine's turning, it's in gear, it expects the out output to be turning. So if those don't, three things don't match up, then it will say it's got an output speed sensor error uh, because the output isn't turning. Now, many people replace those uh, sensors thinking that will fix it. I'm afraid it doesn't. What it means is something's exploded in your gearbox and that's your lot, I'm afraid. So that's a hard problem with the gearbox. If you get this and you try and drive it again, you put it in gear, put your foot on the throttle, no, you don't move at all, goes bang, and then you're in fourth gear. That's it, I'm afraid. That is the signature of a gearbox which has failed. Quite often makes a funny scrunching noise as well <laughs> as bits of the A-clutch cage starts rattling around inside the gearbox. But that's it, gearbox has failed. Time to get a new one or get it refurbished. Okay, so that's about 40%. And I'll just end up with another little one which I've seen twice now. And it's quite an unusual one where someone's driving across uneven ground. They just want to move it from the garage to put it beside the shed or something for a while. They run something over and then the gearbox doesn't work anymore display goes blank and everything that is with this sort of gearbox with this selector switch on the side of the gearbox now it's quite low and if you run something over and it hits it it can actually pull the cable and rips the Bowden cable out of the selector and it's got it's like on a bicycle brake thing where it's got a couple of a uh, bolt and a nut with a hole in it and it just tightens up over a cable well, it's the same on this. It's, I mean, the Bowden cable is not doing a great deal. So if you run over a log and it pushes the selector back, that's going to break the cable or just pull the cable through the nut and bolt. And then you get a strange display and then you can't get it into gear and the selector feels a bit floppy. So that's my final one for you. So we've done battery voltage on the E32. That's always the first place to start. It's also important to get the pressure right in a gearbox as well. You need the current from the battery for the gearbox to work properly. Another reason to change your battery. OK, so number one, battery problems. Number two, select problems either here, under there or on the side of the gearbox. Um, they can cause problems. Three, shift lock solenoids. Four V12 problems, load imbalance, and you'll see that on diagnostics, and that will cause trans-fail safe prog. It's not a gearbox problem at all, it's an engine problem. Five real problems, where it goes bang, goes into fourth gear. Yeah, that's not good. That's a gearbox out sort of requirement, I'm afraid. And the last one we talked about is running over uneven ground and then things don't work. That would be the selector and the the log pulling the oh it doesn't really actually matter if you've got a selector switch on it because it has the same lever that comes down with the the Bowden cable going into it so it doesn't matter if it's got um, the selector on the side the log can hit the selector shaft and twiddle it round and pull the Bowden cable out and uh, that will cause problems as well righty ho well we've burbled on for at least half an hour but I hope it's put your mind at rest to some extent and I'll see you next time.